My name is Thomas Beale. I'm the CTO of Ocean Informatics and one of the architects of OpenAir. This is part 7 of the ADO 1.5 course. We're going to talk about componentization and reuse. Here are the topics. We'll talk about how to make archetypes uh, built from other archetypes, a couple of different ways to do that, external references and slots and also specialization, which is very similar to the concept of inheritance in object-oriented modeling. Why do we need components? Well, let's think about software developers. They're familiar with the need for components in their work. They don't try to build a single class for a whole model. Instead, they build a class that's full of references to other classes and that their class either uses or inherits from. And that's how most modern software is built. So archetypes have the same needs. They're models and they need to make use of other models uh, that can be used in, in further models elsewhere. So here's some examples. Consider the numerous measurement archetypes. Many of them have got a need to record device data. So it, it's immediately obvious that we should have a device archetype that can be used as a component to plug into other archetypes that want to talk about devices. We also need to be able to reuse uh, in a different way. So for example, an international demographic archetype, we might need to add a new field to do with ethnicity. So we're reusing the whole thing, but we're specializing it in some way. So we've got two types of reuse there. Pieces holes and parts, if you like, in other words componentization, or refinement. A further need is partial specification of information structures. For example, a set of headings such as presenting complaint, history, observation, labs, assessment, plan. We want to have an archetype that defines this set of headings and specifies for example, only lab and other observation archetypes under the observations and labs heading. So, the first requirement for building componentized archetypes is a very simple one. Archetype A uses archetype B. For that, in ADO, we have something called an external reference, which is new in ADO 1.5. The second requirement Archetype A allows specific categories of archetypes to be plugged in at a certain point. For this we use a slot which can potentially provide a wide uh, plug-in definition which could be filled by numerous archetypes or potentially a small number of archetypes. Historically only slots were defined in ADO 1.4 since they can in fact serve the first requirement but experience with modelling over the last few years has led to the addition of the direct external reference type in ADO 1.5. This is because uh, a great deal more uh, use of reuse has occurred. That is, what you can think of as refactoring of archetypes into pieces and reuse of those pieces across other archetypes. So, archetype slots. That's the first uh, an older form of componentization. What do they look like? How do they work? When are they used? The ADO 1.4 form of a slot is a set of assertion constraints, almost always limited to constraints based on archetype identifiers. You can see the definition here uh, below where for the items attribute of the top section we have uh, a slot defined using the allow archetype keyword. It's also a type section. It has a, an AT code saying what its meaning is and then you can see an include and an exclude assertion constraint. So archetype underscore ID slash value simply re refers to the actual value of the archetype ID. So it's actually just doing a regular expression match on the ID and for example, the second one you can see uh, excludes archetype IDs that match patient details with any amount of characters on the end. 
A slot definition evaluates to a set of archetypes from the current system of archetypes, that is, whatever is installed in the current uh, location, according to the following logic. I won't go into the logic the way it's stated here, because it's a little bit easier to understand if we think about it in a table. If the include constraint says any lab result archetype is, is OK, the actual meaning of that is that any archetype is acceptable, but the constraint recommends lab result archetypes. If, on the other hand, the constraint had an include with uh, any lab result archetype uh, and an exclude with uh, star, meaning any archetype, then that formally means that only lab result archetypes are allowed. Similarly, the other way around, if there's an exclude constraint on its own, then it actually means that any archetype is acceptable but we recommend to avoid any archetype that was particularly stated, in this case lab result. And lastly, if the exclude, there's an exclude constraint with an include star constraint, it means that lab result archetypes are in fact prohibited. So let's have a look at some slots in the ADO workbench. The first one we'll look at is the observation exam archetype. This is a general examination findings archetype and the structure is pretty simple. It has a clinical description which is a text and an examination detail node uh, which is defined as a slot of clusters. So actually all of the specific details will be in there. This slot definition has includes only set and it's set to cluster archetypes uh, of domain type exam or any variant of exam. Now since only the includes is set, it means that the slot is evaluated as meaning any archetype is actually acceptable, but only the listed archetypes, uh, that is those exam cluster archetypes, are preferred. We can see how the tool evaluates this. It shows a list of exam uh, related cluster archetypes. We can go and have a look at one of them, for example, exam mouth. And you see that exam mouth is actually quite a, a complex archetype. Let's go and have a look at ECG. That's also a complex archetype, but we, for the moment, aren't interested in the main part of it. You can see three slots, uh, all for clusters, one for level of exertion, and it ha follows the same pattern, includes, is set to a particular pattern uh, on the ID and the tool will evaluate that to a set of preferred archetypes, it's only one in this case, level of exertion. ECG device, similar situation, it evaluates to a cluster device archetype and the preferred list for the ECG viewer slot is also the cluster device archetype. Let's see another example. We'll look at the global assessment archetype. You can see some slots here. There's a slot to do with sweating and hydration. The first one is the sweat slot. You can see it's defined as includes any archetype, uh, cluster archetype matching fluid. And in this case, we have excludes set to any. So this is the pattern in which the archetypes in the includes part are now seen as mandated and you can see the tool is interpreted that way and the actual archetype is, it turns out that there is only one cluster fluid archetype. On the other hand, the hydration archetype uh, slot is of the previous type, that is with only preferred or recommended archetypes, in this case matching hydration uh, specified and the tool will show them as preferred. Let's have a look at some other slots. We'll look at some section archetypes. Here we have problem list. Problem list in this particular archetype is just defined as a list of various types of problems. The archetype you can see there and you can see that it evaluates to problem, 
uh, exclusion of problem and problem diagnosis. So they're all variants on that theme. And the way that that's done is by a regular expression that simply uh, is a conjunction of problem archetype, uh, which includes problem diagnosis, and an another archetype, which is exclusion problem diagnosis. We can see another example here, vital signs slot. That's an even larger conjunction of uh, multiple archetype IDs and you can see that that correctly evaluates to various kinds of observation archetypes. The astute among you will have probably realised after looking at these various archetype slot examples and the way that slots are defined in ADO 1.4 that this lexical approach to uh, defining slots can only be a stopgap. It actually does work well enough for practical purposes at the moment and it's even deployed uh, in, in real systems, uh, but it's not going to be sustainable for the future as the numbers of archetypes grow. Uh, the need is for a more reliable semantic means of defining archetypes. So the ADO 1.5 form is uh, likely to be based on constraints on separate parts of the identifier so we can think of the publisher namespace, the reference model publisher, so something like OpenAir or SEN or ISO, package, class, that's observation cluster and so on, and the domain concept, that's the one that we actually need to think about. So the domain concept part will be based on uh, a concept in a proper ontology map to the root code, uh, what we can think of as the AT0000 code in an archetype. Uh, it seems reasonable uh, to use the SNOMED CT constraint syntax. So for example, the constraint might be expressed, as you can see there, there's three variants. And on the right hand side of the matches operator, you have uh, an operator and then something we've just shown it as in English language, but it would actually be a code, an ontology code. So those three operators are taken from the SNOMED CT constraint syntax. The double left arrow uh, means any archetype with this concept or a subtype. So in this example, investigation type, so that archetype or any child archetype that might exist. The second operator is just a single, uh, the, the less than sign, which means any archetype with the subtype of this concept, but not uh, that concept itself. So that's useful in cases where you want to really have a any of the specific children, but not just a more abstract parent. And of course equals does a direct match just on an archetype corresponding to a particular concept. This The syntax hasn't been finalized yet, and it's likely that a little bit more uh, development and uh, collaborative work will take place in the open air community before it's finalised. Clearly, it requires an ontology of concepts uh, with one associated with every archetype to make it happen. The other type of compositional reference between archetypes is what we can think of as ex external references. These are also new in ADO 1.5 and they enable a direct reference to an archetype simply via its identifier. Now in this case we're not trying to do a semantic link, it's simply saying uh, archetype A uses archetype B and uh, because archetype B is in fact a separate archetype it's just referring to it directly. So this enables archetypes that may have originally been a single large archetype to be refactored into pieces in a very similar way uh, to what happens with software. We can show examples of the reference, external reference in the ADO workbench. Of course there are no production examples of this kind of archetype since it's a new feature so we have a test example in the ADO 1.5 test repository. You can see here it shows composition containing as content instead of nodes uh, of 
just reference model types but contained within this archetype we have references to other archetypes and you can see in the source how that's done it's using the use archetype keyword and instead of uh, the reference model type followed by an AT code instead we have an archetype identifier telling us which archetype should be included at that point. Let's get on to the other means of reuse, specialization. The requirement here is to enable the use uh, of archetypes for localization and templating. Technically, specialization means inheriting some parts of a parent archetype unchanged, as you would expect, redefining some elements only by narrowing them and adding new elements potentially. In a specialized archetype you only want to include constructs that express the latter two, that is redefinitions and additions, in other words the changes with respect to the parent archetype. This is primarily achieved by the use of differential paths and of course a lot of semantics that define uh, narrowing, what narrowing actually means for different types of uh, constraint. So This is new in ADO 1.5. Previously specialization did exist but specialized archetypes were copies of their parents with changes and diffs managed by tools. You could see here the part of the AOM that is the key to enabling specializations that is differential path attribute in the C attribute class. We'll see what this enables us to do. We need a little bit of terminology to talk about specialized archetypes before we look at some examples. If, if we think about it, we, we now have a differential form of an archetype. It means that we can also create an effective form by compressing through the inheritance lineage. This is the form effective in a real system of any specialized archetype. We call this the flat, the flat form, in other words the inheritance flattened form. And the operation to create it is called flattening. For a top level archetype the flat form is the same as the differential form. Now we need to think about and understand what are the levels of specialization. So if we just look in the explorer part of the ADO workbench you'll see the same thing in the CKM tool. An archetype shown at the top level, we call that level zero specialization, that is no specialization. And level one and level two, level one is the first level of specialization, level two is the second level. So an archetype with two parents going up the chain is a level two special specialized archetype. The semantics of specialization are essentially that constraints in the parent archetype can be further narrowed and so you can think about particular types of constraint. Reference model type could be turned into a descendant type from the reference model. Attribute existence uh, which could be 0 to 1 could become 0 or 1. Attribute cardinality can be narrowed so 1 to 10 could become 1 to 5, that kind of thing, or 0 to star could become 1 to star. Child object occurrences, similarly to attribute existence, could become narrower, uh, including 0 and 1. 0 means if effectively removing it, which is something we do in templates, or 1 forcing it to be mandatory, or it could be 1 to star or 1 to 5 value sets and ranges such as numerics and coded terms can be narrowed that is the uh, set or range reduced in the specialized archetype we can also add new nodes we call these extensions and they're essentially just new constraints on parts of the reference model that didn't happen to be constrained in the parent archetype all of the internal codes are linked to the specialization level for each level, a dot is included in the code. The syntax uh, of these codes you can see there, AT, NN, NN, and then a re potential repeating dot N section. 
Now, as you might guess, the first part of the code is somewhat historical in nature. If we were designing the code system again, even if we were using the AT code pattern, we would probably just have three uh, numeric parts rather than the four uh, digit part in the top part of the code. It doesn't actually make much difference practically. Uh, so the result of that is that we could have codes like you can see in the examples. So it's worth thinking about what each one of these means. The first example, AT0001.1, that is the redefinition of the AT0001 code in a first level specialized archetype. The next example you can see, AT0001.0.1, is a redefinition of AT0001 in level 2 with no intervening redefinition in level 1. The third example, 80001.1.1, is a redefinition of 80001, which was redefined as 80001.1 in level 1, and then again in level 2, and that gives us the 2 decimal point. The last three examples show codes introduced new in specialised levels of archetype, where there's actually no matching code in the parent. So in the first three cases these correspond to redefinitions of nodes in the archetype and the last three cases correspond to uh, the introduction of new nodes in specialized archetypes. Now from this code syntax system tools and systems can easily determine the specialization level of any node in an archetype. It also leads to specialized paths which are congruent to parent paths and you can see an example below where a parent archetype, the heart rate archetype, has the path you can see there, the first path. The pulse rate child archetype has a path that you can see is nearly the same except that it's got 80004.1 as the final predicate and you can probably guess how software and tooling can match nodes with the second path as well as uh, nodes with the first path based on a query containing the first path. So this is one of the things that enables query matching. Now some of you might think well this is a very strange coding method we should be using something like perhaps NOMED codes or some pure ontology concept system now that in, in theory might be correct it would require actually having uh, an ontology that was being subscribed to by all of the disparate authors of archetypes and the ability to update that ontology more or less in real time and uh, for the ISA relationships in such an ontology to be traversed and to be visible by tools that might be possible one day in the future but it's going to take uh, an amount of collaboration and cooperation essentially uh, internationally that doesn't e exist and hasn't been facilitated to date so we can think of things like that as, as certainly being possible but for the future in a practical sense. So let's look at two examples of specialization uh, in ADL syntax first in this example we have a laboratory archetype and then a specialized child which is a thyroid function test. In the first one we can see right near the top the AT000 uh, quadruple zero code and then further down in the middle of various nodes to do with uh, a generic concept of laboratory result there is a node called panel item uh, that's what the AT0013 code defines. In the specialized version, we first of all have to specialize the code uh, corresponding to the root node. Now it's not just laboratory result, that code now is thyroid function test, which is a kind of laboratory result, and you'll see, as we said just before, the code now includes a dot. The second specialization in this archetype is of the panel item. That single node in the parent, AT0013, has been specialized 
multiple times into uh, a number of children, each one being one of the thyroid function test analytes. So various, you can see the, the names of them here. You can see these codes AT13.2.3456788 and so on. Here's a slightly different type of specialization. Here we have a problem archetype specialized into a problem diagnosis archetype. Again you can see the AT quadruple zero code at the top being specialized. We have a redefinition of the node which defines uh, problem in the parent it's just a free text in the child it's a DV coded text and it's got a specific defining code which uh, would be bound to a, a ref set via the internal code AC0.1 you can also see some additional nodes and these are extensions so these have code uh, codes like 0 0.32 so the first part of the code is 0, 0 0.35, 0 0.37 you can also see ordering markers before AT0003 should come this uh, node AT0.32 and then after AT0031 should come these two cluster nodes here. A final point to make about the semantics of specialization is to do with terminology. Any local value set can be overridden by a narrower value set. Any value defined by an external ref set can be overridden by another ref set, although verifying that the correct subsumption relationship holds between those ref sets, given that they're external, will obviously require a terminology service and an integration of the modeling tools with the terminology service. Now let's have a look at some specialization in the tool. It's worth having a look at the ADO 1.5 test archetypes which are in the Knowledge 2 Subversion Repository in OpenAir and in the Observation group you'll see quite a number of specialized archetypes so some particular test archetypes do just single specific tests so here we have body temperature test archetype and a child archetype which sets occurrences and existence to zero which is a way of removing things so you can see now the archetype path uh, that's being used in these, the specialized child so we have a differential path it's, this path refers to somewhere in the parent archetype in this case the path ending in state if you go and have a look in the parent you'll see that that is this path here uh, data, history, any event, state. That's the first path there. The second path, protocol slash items, what's happening here is that the device uh, node, which is a cluster node, is being removed, that is its occurrences are being set to zero. And we'll just go and quickly look at what we're talking about here. That is this node here, device under the protocol attribute. So if we go back to our child archetype, we're looking at the what we can think of as the source form, or what we call the differential form. That's why it has these paths and it's just showing the differences. In other words, what changes it wants to add to the parent archetype. We have to flatten it using this view here to show what's happened uh, when we actually put add those changes to the parent and you can see indeed that the protocol now has no device and the state branch uh, has been removed from this part of the archetype here. Here's another example. We'll have a look at the parent first. Again, so it's the same parent as before and now we're interested in the quantity constraint inside the temperature node there. You can see that it's allowed uh, as two numbers that don't matter very much and two units Celsius and Fahrenheit. In the child the constraint is uh, if you look through this path you'll discover it corresponds to that uh, particular node and the constraint has been narrowed 
to just degrees centigrade rather than both centigrade and Fahrenheit. If we flatten it, we'll see the result of that inside this node here. Indeed, we only have degrees centigrade. There are some other examples here. There's uh, a parent with various bits and pieces in it where you can do things like redefine the cardinality. So we'll look in the differential form first of this child archetype here. At the path data events, it redefines the cardinality to be 1 to 8. Then we'll go and have a look at the path data events is there. The cardinality there is 1 to star. So we're going to redefine that to 1 to 8. If we flatten it, we'll see indeed that that change has been made. We can redefine occurrences. So in the source form, data events, the this node here, the any event node, occurrences has been specialized in the parent. It was, uh, well, effectively zero to star because there's no constraint on here, so it's picking up whatever constraint is available from the reference model. And if we go here, the application of that constraint there, we can see what the result is when we flatten. We now see that constraint has been applied in the structure at the right place. This one here, at this path, data event so two slash data slash items, this is an example of one of the ones we saw earlier in the slideshow where a particular node, in this case the AT0007 node, which we can find in this archetype here, there it is there, this any field here, has been redefined multiple times, AT0007.1.2.3 and I'll we'll remove the codes now that we understand that and we can see that those three redefinitions appear here uh, in place of the single original one. Let's have a look at some specialization in the CKM archetypes. One good example is the problem and diagnosis archetype. We can see the problem archetype there. It's got a reasonable, reasonably large number of fields in its structure. The diagnosis archetype is a form of the problem archetype which does a couple of things. Firstly, it redefines the code at this node here, data 01 items AT002.1, so that's this node here. It redefines that from being just a text to being a coded text and it's using a uh, an external uh, AC code which will be mapped to an external ref set. The second thing it's doing is to add a node status and the idea of that is to define uh, the status of the of the diagnosis so that's a, a concept of a diagnosis and also some diagnostic criteria. So let's see the result of doing all of that. We'll see the final archetype. Now it's sometimes hard to see where the changes are so if you use this uh, just shrink out tool to fit a little bit better. If we use this uh, checkbox here for inheritance it will tell us what things have changed and what things have just been inherited. So as you might guess everything inherited unchanged is grey. There's our status node there, provisional working status of the diagnosis. This is the change to the, the diagnosis, uh, the index diagnosis itself. If we go down a bit further, we'll see the diagnostic criteria have turned up. Other specialized archetypes that are worth having a, a little look at are the lab test archetypes. So there's a number of lab tests which are specializations of uh, a, a general generic lab test. You can have a look at lipids. I'm looking at, a, looking at it directly in the flat form here. If I click our in inheritance checkbox, we'll see that what's been done is these uh, nodes here have actually uh, been defined as overrides 
of a node in the parent. If we add the codes in, we'll see that the codes mark them as overrides of the AT0078 node, which we could find in the parent. There it is there, it's just results. So it's a sort of generic panel item. And in that child, we have these overrides. So each one of those has a particular sensible quantity constraint that makes sense for that, that uh, particular analyte. We can see a reasonably large example of specialization. The CF CSF uh, variant of microbiology has uh, quite a large structure. You can see things that have been added uh, for the CSF version. If we go back up the tree one, we're just in microbiology, which is itself, of course, a very large uh, archetype. And all of those items there, you'll see are, or nearly all of them are, specializations of the AT0078 node. These nodes here, for example, field count, uh, 0 0.18, 0 0.14 colony count, and so on, these are newly introduced, so they're not considered to be specializations of the generic result node that we uh, find in the parent archetype. So, there's a lot more exploring you can do in the tool, and I certainly encourage it. Let's just summarize what we've found out uh, in this part of the course. With the new ADL AOM 1.5 features, we have three different ways of uh, doing reuse. We've got componentized structures with direct reuse, and that ena enables, for example, a cluster for pain to have been refactored out from a, an original larger archetype into its own new archetype and to be referred to directly from the previous archetype. So that's our external reference. The second type is uh, componentization based on constraints on what can go, uh, what can come next at a certain point. So that's the slot concept. And then specialization, which is the reuse of holes, in other words, whole archetypes, whole structures with redefinitions and extensions. So this allows specializing variants of, of whole structures uh, for the purpose of localization and templating. So once again, uh, these are the references for the specifications. I hope you have a look and you'll see, as usual, the most detailed explanations of everything you've seen so far. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to have you for the next segment of the course.